Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. There was this guy that put like his entire weight on my neck, and I was like, hey, like, I can't breathe. Like, your arm is on my neck. Your arm is on my neck. And he was like, I can't move. I can't move. As authorities continue investigating the Astroworld Music Festival in Houston, a 20 year old woman from San Antonio is describing the scary scene coming up her experience at the concert. We're all in our own little worlds thinking about where we're going, what we're going to be doing. Uh, you know, maybe we just need to take notice and see what's going on around us. A North Carolina girl alive to tell her story this morning after using a hand signal that she learned from TikTok. How a complete stranger helped save her from a dangerous and terrifying situation. That's in your morning headlines. Plus, a major source of global warming could be living in your fridge. How changing the way you throw away scraps could help combat a global issue. And taking a live look at the Alamo City, the sun is out, the temps are rising, and we are checking in with Justin Horn for a look at this week's full weather. Good morning. It is 8.59, and we start with new details out of Houston. Details from authorities. Now, now they're working to figure out how exactly eight people died in a crush of fans at that Astro World Music Festival. A local concert girl from San Antonio is speaking with us about the scary moments when she was in the front row of the Travis Scott performance. Tiffany Huerta spoke with a local woman about her experience. And Tiffany, how did she describe those terrifying moments in the crowd? Bianca Orta says she was in the front row near the VIP section when Travis Scott was performing. She says it was extremely hot and everyone kept pushing, making it a scary situation. Now take a look at this video of the event. This all happening on Friday evening. An estimated 50,000 people were in attendance. 20 year old Bianca Orta says people in the crowd were extremely hot and began sharing water bottles. She says during the Travis Scott performance, it was the crowd pushing, making the situation terrifying for many. Everybody was just pushing, jumping. People were trying to record, so you had arms in your face. We crowd surfed a lot of people out. Like there was at least like 10 people that were passing through. We crowd surfed someone's dad because their daughter, I guess she got hurt. Bianca eventually got out of the crowd and was not heard. Authorities say at least eight people were killed and several others were injured. Now coming up in the next half hour, Bianca explains why she believes there wasn't enough security at the concert. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Tiffany. And this morning on KSET.com, there are several stories you can read now about this tragedy, including Travis Scott's message to his fans and the people in attendance. RJ Marquez joining us right now with more on the incident and more reaction, RJ. Yeah, guys, obviously a lot of different angles to this tragedy. And the first thing, obviously, just the amount of people that were there that caused this crowd surge. That's a big part of this investigation and a bunch of questions that we're looking at. So right now at KSET.com, we have a series of photos that show just how large this crowd was and how really close they were to the stage. So this is an inside look at the Astroworld Festival before the deadly crowd surge. So some of these photos are from the Associated Press and our sister station as well, KPRC TV in Houston. They have images from the air that show the moments of the festival before the chaos erupted among the crowd. And prior to that chaos, there were also people going past security barriers and concerns about safety overall with the crowd. So people who have gone to these shows always say it's a very high energy show. And obviously we saw a lot of the pyrotechnics are also a part of this as well, so you could check that story out on KSAT.com. And some new developments this morning on the performer Travis Scott, Variety reporting that he will not perform at this weekend's Day in Vegas Festival. He was scheduled to headline the show Saturday, but Variety saying that Scott is, quote, too distraught to play. The entertainment site also says Scott will give full refunds for all attendees who bought tickets to Astro World. Over the weekend, he posted on social media that he was, quote, absolutely devastated by what took place, and he said, my prayers go out to all the families and those impacted by what happened at the Astroworld Festival. He also said Houston police have his full support during the investigation and he thanked police, firefighters, and energy park officials for their quick response. And finally this morning, rapper Riddy Roch announced on social media he will be donating his concert earnings to the families of the people who died during the festival. Rich was one of the several artists that performed at the festival. The rapper posted on Instagram that he wanted to, he wants the families to reach out to him so he could donate money to them. He said he will be donating his net compensation from the concert to the families of this incident. And we have more information on this, guys, on KSAT.com, along with several other stories when it comes to this tragedy there at Astroworld in Houston over the weekend. All right. Thank you, RJ. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, now here at home, taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 58 degrees. 
a picture perfect weekend here in San Antonio. You made it out and about. You ran what, 12 miles, you said? On Saturday. Oh my God. 12 Just, miles? Doesn't hurt. She's putting us to shame. No, it's, it's. I wasn't ready for that. 12 it's, miles. It's running yeah. season. <laughs> Apparently. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. I, the, the weather is nice enough for running, that's for sure. It was gorgeous this weekend. We had clear skies. Great job, by the way, Steph. Uh, let's go outside for you right now. We have clear conditions. Derek, was some fog earlier. Uh, as you look out to the uh, north and east around New Braunfels, still there. Look at the visibility down close to zero in New Braunfels. So that's still a problem spot. I think the fog will lift within the hour, but just something to be uh, mindful of. You look at the satellite picture, you can see some morning clouds off to our west. San Antonio's got clear skies, and we'll zoom in a little bit closer. That area of what looks like clouds here along I-35, that is actually fog. You can see it here on the visible satellite picture, stretching from New Braunfels to Seguin, up to San Marcos in Austin. So be careful, there is still a dense fog advisory until 10 a.m. It includes San Antonio, but we haven't seen the fog here. Temperatures right now, 60 degrees at the airport, 59 Kerrville, 56 in New Braunfels, 58 in Uvalde. And forecast for today, will be up around 77. Another picture perfect day. Don't forget with the time change, sunset is now at 542. We'll be down to 72 by six o'clock with southeast chilly winds, five to 10 miles per hour, guys. Thank you, Justin. And taking a look outside with TransGuide, looking beautiful out there at Loop 410 and also at Highway 281 at Bitters. No problems right now. All right, yeah, we checked in with Stephen Cavazos throughout the morning, and he was like, oh, this is so surprising. There's so much green on the screen. Yeah, it's a great Monday morning for that. Absolutely. All right, let's take a look at today's 9 and 9. The U.S. is dropping its travel ban today, making tourism possible for millions of fully vaccinated foreigners. The ban has prevented travel from dozens of countries since last year. Proof of vaccination and a negative COVID-19 test is required to fly into the U.S. For the first time in nearly 20 months, all vehicle checkpoints between the United States and Canada are open for travel. Canada welcomed back fully vaccinated Americans back in August, but the United States did not reciprocate. The downside to this news is that Canadian citizens will now be required to show a negative COVID PCR test upon re-entry into their homeland, which officials say could cost up to $300 each. Fresh off of a big legislative victory, President Biden will hit the road this week to tout his bipartisan infrastructure package that was passed by the House Friday night. Meanwhile, Democrats are still fighting over the $1.75 trillion social spending package, creating uncertainty about what will be included in the final bill. The White House not backing down after a federal appeals court temporarily blocked the Biden administration's vaccine mandate for businesses with more than 100 employees. The court questioned the mandate's constitutionality. The Justice Department says they will back the White House in the battle. A Kaiser study shows two-thirds of parents are still hesitant to give their children ages 5 to 11 vaccinated, but the first numbers are in. Nearly 300,000 kids under 12 have received Pfizer's child vaccine since it was authorized last week. Natural gas headed out of the U.S. at a record rate. And with so much going to energy-starved parts of the world, analysts say that could push home heating prices up for the U.S. this winter. Prices for natural gas nearly double compared to a year ago. A Chinese woman has become that country's first woman to walk in space. Wang Yaping is one of three astronauts who launched into space early Saturday morning. Yaping and her crew will spend six months in space. And speaking of space, NASA and SpaceX working to return a crew from the International Space Station today. The crew spent six months in space. They are expected to depart from the International Space Station around 1 p.m. with splashdown right off the coast of Florida later tonight around 9. The next group of astronauts expected to launch into space this coming Wednesday. The Milwaukee Bucks will visit the White House today to celebrate their NBA championship win over the Phoenix Suns. It is the first championship title for the franchise in 50 years. And that's today's Night at Night. And in your top stories this morning, San Antonio police looking for the person responsible for stabbing a man last night. It happened around 9.30 p.m. at the Red Roof Inn on Wolf Road. That's off of 281 across from the airport. Officers tell us the man was stabbed in the stomach during an argument in that parking lot. The suspect took off before police got there, and the man injured was taken to the hospital in stable condition. And if you still need to get your COVID vaccine or flu shot, Metro Health has two pop-up clinics open today.
the first of which will be at the House of Prayer Lutheran Church near Wurzbach and I-10. Now that one opened at 9 a.m. It stays open until 3 p.m. The second location will be at the Northside Activity Center that is off Calabra Road near 410. That one will be open from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Both locations offering the Pfizer, Moderna and Johnson and Johnson COVID vaccines as well as flu shots. You are encouraged to wear a face mask at the clinics and other pop-up clinics will be open throughout the week. We're going to have all that information. Just head to KSAT.com. Time now, 908, 59 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, the food in your fridge helps you stay alive, but what you do with the leftovers could help the planet stay alive. We're going to explain. But first, authorities make an odd discovery inside of a New York theater. Details on what they found behind a wall. That and much more next in your morning headlines. David Sears is here. And welcome back. It's about 9-11 in your morning headlines. The cost of everyday products just keeps going up with no relief in sight. And social media was big in saving a teenager's life. Plus firefighters with a couple of big rescues, a man in a crawl space and a deer. David Sears is here. David, you got a lot going on. Yeah, animal kingdom again, wild kingdom again with that. And then, um, you know, prices going up. There you go. You checked them lately? Whole gamut. Ooh, how many of you have checked your bank account lately and said, what? What happened? You That's just not bought a up. tank of gas, paid $30 more. You just went to the grocery store and loaded up the cart with the same stuff you always buy. Last week you paid $150. This time you got rung up for $225. You're going, what? Yep, price is out of control. I hate to start your Monday off with some bad news, but it's going to get worse. Two snack companies raising prices. Let's start with the company that makes snacks like Chips Ahoy, Ritz, and Sour Patch Kids. Sour Patch Kids going up 7%. Seriously. Next year, the head of the company says they have to raise prices because of inflation that he thinks will hit 6% next year. Kraft has already raised prices. That's got some eyebrows being raised because the company's making a lot more money. They went up 5% on most of their products. More going up next year. How about macaroni and cheese going up 20%? Jello and pudding going up 16%. Get ready. It's coming. All right, do you guys know what this is? The five and then the thumb and then the fingers. I believe that's a hand gesture that tells other people you are in danger. That signal and social media may have just saved a 16 year old girl's life. There it is. The teenager was missing from her home in North Carolina. She was in a car with a man heading back from Ohio and driving through Kentucky. When she flashed that signal, she learned it from watching TikTok videos. Once again, that signal means you're in trouble. A person in another car saw her give that signal, knew what it meant and called 911. We don't know how long coming down the interstate from Ohio that she had been doing this to other motorists, hoping that they would notice that she was in distress. I've been doing this work for a long time where we talk about safety with survivors, with neighbors, like how you flip your light on or do you have a certain code word if you text it to somebody that would say that you need help or in danger. So there's always been these trends towards finding safety from community. And I think this is another platform to do so. Yeah, you start like Darlene Thomas talking about that. She's the executive director of Greenhouse 17. That's an advocacy group for abused victims. So since the teenager was taken across state lines, the FBI is now investigating. Bizarre story of the day. This is a historic theater in Syracuse, New York. Apparently, a man walked into the theater, walked right by some staff. They asked him if he belonged there. He kind of ignored him and just went right upstairs to the bathroom. Some of the staff looked for the guy, couldn't find him, so they figured he left. Nope, the man ended up getting stuck in a crawl space on the second floor of the theater. He was there for two days. The fire department was called. First, they drilled a hole in the wall, inserted a fiber optic camera to find the guy, and then they went to work. They had to take the sledgehammer to the wall, knock out some drywall and some tile. They finally got him. He was naked, but he was safe. I'm glad that he was uh, that, that that he was able to call out to us. I'm glad that we had staff present to hear him. I'm glad that the Syracuse Fire Department was able to to rescue him. Yeah, police believe the guy has a mental illness and he was taken to the hospital, but had no major injuries. And finally, oh dear. That is a buck in a canal. This is happening near Sacramento. The fire department called in for the rescue. People noticed the deer couldn't scale that concrete side to get out. The two firefighters in the rescue boat able to wrangle the big guy. The good news is that Andler didn't pop the side of the boat. You'll see it in just a second. <laughs> they, get, they get him right over near the near the bank and the, they got his antler up near the boat. I'm like, yeah, I hope it doesn't pop the air out of that thing. The deer was able to walk away. Maybe we'll see there. See how he's got him? Like, yeah. Oh, man. Good, those good antlers. Strategy. You ever been up to those antlers on deer? Pretty sharp. 
So David good. Sears, we went from. Uh, he's out of there. Usually we have all the bear stories. We got the bears in the grocery store, but now deer. Just deer. Yeah. Maybe Just bear deer. by the end of the week. Who knows? All right, as long as they're all safe, right? If y'all can bear it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't bear sports, so could you? Uh, no. <laughs> Ooh, how about those Cowboys? Busy, busy weekend. We're going to check back in with you in just a little bit. Yep. Time now, 916. Oh, look at that. Officially 60 degrees. Yeah, now we can check in with Justin. Yeah. <laughs> we were uh, waiting. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, starting to warm up some, and it's going to feel really nice again this afternoon. I was looking at the numbers. We haven't been above 80 so far this month, guys, so we've been in pretty good shape here in November. This is kind of our sweet spot time of year where we get these fronts coming through, and it feels pretty nice. Let's start with the satellite picture because I want to show you where the fog is this morning. We have some fog up and down I-35. It's been pretty thick around New Braunfels and still looking at some reduced visibility there. Elsewhere, we have clouds out west. So if you're watching us from Del Rio or Eagle Pass, likely cloudy skies. Here in San Antonio, you'll notice it's clear. Sun is out, and that's why temperatures are really starting to warm up. There's a look at the fog. You can see it there. And I love that we can see it on visible satellite picture, but it's starting to shrink. We're starting to see that fog decrease, and I think within the hour, Visibility will get much better here up and down I-35, especially in New Braunfels and San Marcos. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile. Earlier it was close to zero, so this is improvement. No fog here in San Antonio. We did see some around Carissa Springs as well, but the number's improving there too. Dense fog advisory does go for about another 45 minutes or so. Uh, and basically, again, it's just that I-35 corridor there northeast of San Antonio where we're having the major issues. Take a look at the time lapse. You can actually see some of the fog on the horizon there. A very thin layer right there. There's your fog. 60 degrees. Dew point is at 56, and we have calm winds. So it was a pretty good setup this morning. 59 in Kerrville, 59 Rock Springs, 62 right now in Del Rio, 65 Catula, 61 in Gonzales. In the forecast for today, we'll make it up to about 77, maybe some 60s still in the hill country. And then by the, tomorrow morning, we're back in the 50s, but not as chilly. 58 degrees to start your Tuesday. Temperatures moderate, at least as morning lows moderate as we get towards Wednesday before we get our next cold front. Uh, dew point tracker shows dew points increasing slightly through about Wednesday. We get our first front that knocks down dew points on Friday. Then we get another one on Friday or, or uh, Thursday, I should say. And then we get another front on Friday that knocks down the dew points again. So we're getting these series of fronts. Unfortunately, this next one I don't think is going to bring much rain with it. We look at the dew points. They are increasing, by the way. And that's one of the reasons we saw fog this morning. Dew points now in the 50s. High pressure at the surface set up over Louisiana, and that is ushering in that moisture, at least for now. It's not going to get so bad that it's going to get humid or anything like that, but we will see dew points rise some next couple days. So here's Futurecast. 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, we're starting to see some high clouds move in. I think tomorrow is going to be a much more cloudy day with high clouds, maybe some low clouds mixed in there tomorrow morning as well. That moves out, and then here comes our next system. So Wednesday morning, starting off with some clouds. We'll get some sun during the afternoon, and then this front swings through, I'd say about midnight, 2 a.m. Thursday morning, so very, very early, and we'll be on the tail end of any rain chances. In fact, here in San Antonio, I'm not so sure we're going to get anything. And then the, the front moves through, and we get clearing conditions on Thursday, and again, another shot of some cooler air on Friday. So here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. 77 degrees today, 77 tomorrow, mostly cloudy and then breezy Wednesday. I'll put in a 10% chance of rain with that front early, early Thursday morning, but your Thursday actually looks really good. Breezy 75, 71 Friday, another shot of some cool air. And that means the weekend looks great yet again with dew points uh, falling, low temperatures in the forties and highs in the seventies. Man, we just keep stacking up these weekends. It's like yeah. amazing, guys. Yes. Awesome news. Thank you, Justin. You Thank it. you, Justin. 920, 60 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, why a nonprofit in New York is focused on keeping solid food waste out of landfills in an effort to reduce global warming. Hi, welcome back. Time now is 923. At last week's UN Climate Summit, more than 100 countries signed a pledge to limit emissions of methane, a greenhouse gas that's a leading cause of global warming. So leaders talked about cracking down on the oil and gas industry, but there is one source of methane that may surprise you that we put in our trash. Here's ABC's Dan Lieberman with more. When you think of climate change, you think of culprits like cars, industrial and power plants. But Justin Green is focused on the food from your fridge. Some eggshells. You know, here's a pit from a, 
a peach or something. He runs Big Reuse, an environmental nonprofit in New York City that helps divert food and yard waste away from landfills into mountains of compost. I mean, it all breaks down. A lot of this stuff you see here is the stuff that takes longer to break down. You can see some... It's just amazing, the heat that's coming off of it. Yeah, it can get up like to 160 degrees when we put uh, our food scraps in the garbage or our yard waste in the garbage. It ends up in landfills or incinerators. Um, in landfills, it generates methane, uh, which is a major climate change gas. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, solid waste landfills are the third largest source of human-related methane emissions in the U.S. That's a bigger number than some heavy hitters like the aviation industry. According to the Natural Resources Defense Council, as much as 40% of the food supply in the U.S. is going to waste. More than half of that ends up in a landfill, releasing emissions equal to 3.4 million vehicles. $400 billion is spent on wasted food every year, nearly 20% of U.S. farmland devoted to food that is wasted, using up an estimated 4 trillion tons of water. It's a big problem, one that Green says composting can help counteract. When you compost, you're adding in oxygen and it feeds those bacteria. So they're aerobic bacteria they, and they don't generate methane. It starts at our refrigerators. The primary source in the U.S. of this wasted food really is at the level of the individual. As much as 8% of human-caused greenhouse gas emissions could be reduced if we stop wasting food. So next time you're about to throw food in the garbage, think again. It's pretty easy to compost in your own backyard. Um, if you are in a community like New York City, um, you have to be a little bit more creative. We collect at farmers markets, at other community gardens, we bring it back here, anything from your food scraps to yard waste to soiled paper towels to even meat can be composted at these large scale uh, systems. Just imagine the amount of waste that we generate every year and at one third of it could be turned into compost and go back to improving soils at farms or in our community. Dan Lieberman, ABC News, New York. Oh, I got a lot of good numbers in there. Yeah. 400 tri like trillions. Great, great a stuff. Lot. Yeah. <laughs> All right, time now at 926, 61 degrees out. A lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. We hear from a San Antonio resident who was at the Astroworld event, how she's recalling her experience after the break. Plus, we are talking to housing market. If you've looked at housing prices, if you're in the market for a new house, you notice that these prices are getting higher and higher here in San Antonio across the country. We hear from an expert about why that is and what could come next. And welcome back. It's 929. Authorities continue investigating the Astroworld Music Festival in Houston. And a concert goer from San Antonio is sharing the scary moments even before the concert started. That's right. The San Antonio woman says people were storming through the gates. It was pure chaos. Tiffany Huerta spoke with the San Antonio woman about her experience. So, Tiffany, what did she say happened early on during the day? Max Stephanie Bianca Orta says even at the entrance of the festival, people were cutting the lines and even knocked down a fence. But take a look at this video. About 50,000 people were at the sold out Astroworld Festival in Houston. 20 year old Bianca Orta says she arrived to the festival around eight in the morning, even though gates didn't open until the afternoon. Bianca says she noticed that there wasn't a lot of security. She says people were cutting the line and at one point knocked over a fence. Everybody was running through and security was just moving out of your way. And they were like, keep running, keep running. Because, I mean, if you would stop running, you were going to get trampled. Authorities say at least eight people were killed and several others were injured. Bianca also shared how it was a scary situation being in the front row of the concert near the VIP section when Travis Scott was performing. She says people in the crowd were extremely hot and they began sharing water bottles. She said the only way people were being get, getting out of this concert were crowd surfing. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Tiffany. And research from Realtor.com shows that houses in San Antonio are up 12.2% year over year. That means homes on average more than 12% more expensive now than they were this time last year. Yeah, there's a lot of questions when it comes to the real estate market now and what is on the horizon. That is why local realtor joined us on Leading SA this weekend. Danny Charbel with Keller Williams San Antonio joined us to talk San Antonio and the surrounding area housing markets. We talked about the reasons for the price hikes, the hot spots in and around San Antonio. We talked about Bernie. New Braunfels, Castroville, and what the future of the local market looks like. Take a listen.
Now, is it going to stop? No, uh, we're expecting, at least speculation says, that this kind of activity and this kind of fervor for home buying is going to continue through at least the second quarter of next year, if not third quarter of next year. And that's all going to be um, solidified by interest rates. As long as interest rates stay very, very low, uh, you're going to see that kind of activity in the uh, in the buying sector. Um, and then, of course, folks are selling because they can get a lot of money for their houses. And I'm not mad at them for that. Now, Danny broke down a lot, including interest rates. You know, he also talked about the groups of people. He talked about first time home buyers, people who are downsizing, taking advantage of the market. And that was just a small part of our conversation. You can listen to the whole discussion right now. Just head to the leading essay section at casenet.com and then join us next Sunday, 8 a.m. for our next leading essay. And for now, it looks great outside. We're at 63 degrees. And even if you started the day with a jacket or sweater by this afternoon, you may not need it. I don't think you will. Yeah, temperatures will. Drift up close to 80. I think we stayed just below that number this afternoon, upper 70s, but more great weather after what was a fantastic weekend. Here's a bit of good news, too. Pollen count is in. Mold's low at 230. We've had a good stretch here uh, when it comes to the pollen count. We hope it continues for a while longer because we all know what happens once we get to December, so we can enjoy this stretch as it stands right now. Outside, blue skies as uh, we look off to the east and temperatures sitting at 60 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 56. We mentioned earlier there still is a little bit of fog as you get up towards New Braunfels. That is starting to lift, though. Temperatures in the 60s, for the most part, you will find a few 50s in places like Kerrville and New Braunfels. Uvalde and Carissa Springs also in the 50s, but we make it into the upper 70s this afternoon. And I mentioned that dense fog advisory that goes for about another 30 minutes or so. Uh, the main issue being New Braunfels. Forecast 77, your high temperature. Keep in mind again that sunset is at 542 today with Southeast Julia winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Guys. Thank you, Justin. A quick look at the roads with Trans Sky. It looks like it's a stalled vehicle there on Highway 37 at Jones Avenue. Be careful if you're headed the direction, but it doesn't really look like it's impacting traffic at this time. All right, so if you've been on Twitter over the weekend, you might have noticed that Elon Musk was trending. Yes. There was a poll that he put up asking people if he should sell 10% of his Tesla shares. Right. Well, what's kind of interesting is that uh, Elon Musk said he would abide by the results of this poll, mm -hmm. whichever way it goes. And the results were 58% in favor of selling and 42% against suggesting he would sell the shares. Now, this has huge implications for finances because it seems like this was in response to the proposed billionaire's tax, which would tax his unrealized gains, meaning if he didn't sell it, he could get taxed on it anyway, so why not sell it? Here's the thing, though. If he does sell 10% of his shares, um, which on Friday closed at about $1,222, that would be just about $28 billion. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, interesting that he took to Twitter, though. Yeah, you know, he's big on Twitter, and um, I didn't know this until reading this article. He has... 62.7 million Twitter followers. Wow. And he, so he, even though he hasn't confirmed the size of the tax bill, mm -hmm. he did tweet out, uh, no, I do not take any, uh, I do not take a cash salary or bonus from anywhere. I only have stock. That's the only way for me to pay taxes personally is to sell stock. There you go. And important to mention, he lived in California, which would have something like 13% uh, tax rate, but he moves to, since moved to Texas. Yes. There you go. Welcome to Texas. Good luck on sharing your uh, or selling your shares and have fun with that $28 billion if you sell it. It will be interesting to follow to see what will happen next. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's something we've been talking about throughout the morning, and we've now named the No Shave November mascot Hank. Hank. Yeah, <laughs> great choice, by the way. So, of course, I mean, you see Max there. It's not that he's like waking up late yeah, not no, shaving. This never. is all for a good cause. And we start at the beginning of the month. We have Stephen Cavazos uh, leading the charge and collecting oh, yeah. donations for the team. And we have 15 members on our team. We do. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, you know, it's really, uh, it's really impressive. Oh, they wanted yeah, to close, a up. close all right. up. Nice. So <laughs> need to mention we're only, what is it, the eighth? So we're only eight days into this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it, all joking aside, it really is such an important cause. Yeah. You know, all of us, so many of us have friends, family, associates, you know, people who have gone through cancer, who are going through cancer, and this allows us to use this platform and social media platforms to help raise awareness and 
raise money and just a, a hand to Justin Horn. Yes. Come, you're Mark Austin. You know that? You're, you're a number coming two. In hot at number two. Love to see that, though. I love to see those numbers. It's early in November, so we still have more time. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, I was giving uh, Mike Oster. Oh, there we go. Hello. <laughs> Very nice. Very I was giving nice. Mike Osterhage a hard time this morning because he was number three, but I said you couldn't even take the top board in the uh, weather department? <laughs> <laughs> oh, challenge. I, it is a challenge. It's a, it's a game within the game, wow. Justin. I love it. Congrats to Justin on that. that so, yeah, awesome. if you guys want to donate, all of us have our individualized links on our social media. Clearly, Justin is doing a great job advertising. Right. But for all the information, here are some of our uh, explanations on why we do it. Just head to ksat.com slash no shave. You're going to find the link to donate to Team KSAT. And we're going to be continuing to share updates right here on GMSA and GMSA at 9. Yeah, and you still have time. Lots yeah. of time. It's good because it's 40s in the morning now, so I got like a It's a good it's jacket. A, it's a good time to like keep warm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Time now at 937. 63. I can't use that excuse right now. No, you can't. <laughs> it's like, at least you're not growing this like during June. That's like true. July. Oh so my god. You're goodness. okay. You're okay. All right, coming up next, a recap of the weekend sports headlines next with RJ and David. And welcome back. It's 941. The Cowboys stunned by the Broncos at home and our poor Spurs suffer another late game loss. David and RJ, you. they're already breaking it down. I told you to go to Orlando. <laughs> you didn't well, do they it. won that game. <laughs> she won, well, she went to the Orlando, Orlando game here and they won. Yeah. Three wins this season, two against the Magic. Uh, a non-stop nah, flight from San Antonio to Orlando. Yeah. You didn't go. <laughs> not great. It's not great for the Spurs right you now. You could have been back by this morning. Why don't we start with the Cowboys, the other loss? The, yeah. yeah. Cowboys that start that. Okay, let's start with the Cowboys. Sure. Let's go ahead and do that here. Ooh. Cowboys taking on the Broncos here at home. And I. Mm -mm. this feels to me like this was the game where the Cowboys kind of came back down to earth a little bit, to say the least. <laughs> It would, no, they crashed back down yeah, there. There we this go. One. It was uh, Dak didn't look right. Mm -mm. He, he flat. I mean, look at him. He, he he's not moving good. He's throwing some really. But he looked like he did like two and a half years ago. He threw some oh. really bad passes yesterday. Mm -hmm. He missed a wide open CD lamp. You talk about bad luck. Yeah. Now this Here we is go. just pure this bad luck right there. So you understand Leon what Lett, David Leon Lett. Huh? The Leon Lett play from the Thanksgiving. Well, no, that was back. even worse than this. Well, yeah. <laughs> but so they blocked the punt, but since the block punt went past the line of scrimmage and the Cowboys touched it, yep. then Denver can recover and keep the ball, and that's what happened. And it's like, really? Of all the things that are going on, that's, see, when you that's know just one of those plays. You knew, yeah. you, you knew it wasn't their day. Like yeah, the that's helmets, definitely though. not going their way. The helmets? Yeah, the, helmets? Yeah, 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 that, yeah. the red stripe was for Veterans Day. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was, uh, that was something nice. different. They hadn't used those since, I think, the mid-70s. Yeah. So, uh, oh, here, hey. Pick right here. Caden Stearns. Right there? Steel alum. Yeah, Steel alum, former Longhorn standout. San Antonio's own Caden Stearns coming up with a big... I N T right there. And Broncos just, yeah. I mean, he they were up in this game 30 to zero. Yeah, he just didn't. He, 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 he threw way over CeeDee Lamb's head. CeeDee Lamb was wide open. He threw it over his head twice yeah. and missed it. And that was in the first. They went for the fourth down twice mm -hmm. on the, in the first quarter and missed them both. So it was just, it was going to be a bad day all the way around. But here, here's the thing, though. If you look at the stats, you go, well, Dak threw for 212 yards and two TDs. <laughs> yeah, 121 of those yards and yeah. the two touchdowns were in the last right, four minutes right. of the game when he, Denver was like, we're on the bus going home. Yeah, he looked a little rusty, and of course the Cowboys had the bye before that. Dak didn't play yeah. last weekend, so maybe just getting some of that rust off. Or like we're saying, maybe uh, that calf hasn't fully heal healed yet. Maybe he's trying to well, plant no. on it or trying to alleviate some of the pain there. So, but you know what's going to happen next week? Oh, Denver's going to get run right out of the gym. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. They're going to be all excited about being the Cowboys, and then they just they'll come back down to earth. They do have Atlanta next week. Yeah, and home. I think um, we actually oh, let's right. go ahead and hear from Dak and Zeke after this loss to the Broncos. Okay. I mean, obviously, I wasn't as clean as, as I normally am um, or as, as I have been. Uh, tough to say and blame that. I mean, I spent a lot of time off and came back in the first game different. So uh, I'm not going to sit there and blame two weeks when, when I had a great week of practice. I don't think we came out uh, thinking we already had the game in the, in the bag. Um, you know, I just think that we didn't play good football. We did not play well. Hey, at least they admit it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, that's true. I no. mean, uh, and that was really the thing. Cowboys had won six straight games and really coming off of a nice win last Sunday night. Emotional win on the road. And then, uh, yeah, just kind of stunk up the joint. This might have been a little uh, <laughs> a, a little alarm clock going off saying, hey, you guys aren't right. as good as you think you are. You still got some work to do. 
Hmm. So there you go. Um, Houston Texans. Tyron Why? Taylor got the start. Ooh, this is ooh, <laughs> brutal. Okay, that's Was enough. this game even on? Yeah, let's, let's, <laughs> let's move on. He got proof. sacked five times. He threw three interceptions. That's all you need to know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where are we going next? On here. San Antonio Spurs. Oh, well, y'all really just ran through the text. We did yeah, just right. run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I don't think I watched more than, like, a few highlights of that, it, oh, that to be a, quite it, honest. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay, see, you could – what was I thinking Orlando? Because they – They, 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 they played, played Orlando, Orlando on Friday. They, they played Orlando. Orlando. They were at Orlando on Friday. Yeah, they played Oklahoma both, City both bad last teams, night. for the record. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's just, yeah it doesn't um, matter. So, doesn't story help. of this one here, Spurs up by 16, came out, yeah. running out of the gate, playing really well, and then they just uh, let OKC get back into this game and ended up – Falling behind by double digits, made a run there at the end, but uh, just another very uneven, inconsistent performance. It was like the uh, they had to leave with like six and a half left, and then they uh, couldn't uh, yeah. couldn't finish out, just like normal. So I think what you know we, how we always talk about if they would have done this, mm-hmm. if they mm-hmm. would have done, but this, I think we're realizing that they're just not very good at the end of games right now <laughs> because not they're three good. and seven, and their record shows it. So, yeah. but and, uh, uh, and and pops a little motivational, blame it on whoever and get after him in the media, <laughs> barely didn't work, so we're going to try it again. I, let's hear from Pop. We gave up about 12 or 15 points uh, in the second quarter just by being full of ourselves. Uh, that's about the third time this season, maybe the fourth, I'm not sure, we've gotten a lead. Uh, and if you lose the lead because the other team does this, that, and the other, that's one thing. Uh, but what they did was they out-physicaled us, they out-aggressived us, and we played like we felt sorry for ourselves. I'm okay. just making up words. He's so upset. So do you guys think it's youth? aggressive us? Do you think it's youth, inconsistency? I mean, what's... Uh, they're full of themselves. Both. Okay. Both. Yeah. Or, they're yeah. Feeling themselves. themselves too much, I guess. Yeah. You know who I'm starting to like real quick, though? I started to like Thaddeus Young. Yeah, he's yeah. a good veteran, veteran, good veteran guy. Here, kind yeah. of like stabilizes yeah. the situation. They need a some more bit. of that. Yeah, so Derek White has been has yeah. been pretty bad. I I think yeah. Derek needs to step up. Honestly, zero <laughs> points yesterday. I can't even yeah. remember yeah. Zero? a game where you play 30 minutes Nothing? and Derek White doesn't get Come anything. On. Yeah, tough luck. They're coming home. They'll be home Wednesday. All right, who? What? what oh. Oh. Hey, yes. time to go. Wins. Going back to the Roadrunners here. Flying high now with their old wow. Roadrunners out in you. You tip. Look at that. Look, yeah. at, look at him go. 75 to the house. He's the second play of the game. Yeah. If, <laughs> if he's, not, uh, he, he's just moved up from, from like the third round of the NFL draft to maybe the second. This, oh, kid yeah. can, this kid can flat out play. And the, yeah. and the quarterback can flat out play. So where's he going to go in the draft? Frank Harris, over 300 total yards offense, three touchdowns as well. Frank has been great all year. UTSA takes her business on the road, beats UTEP 44 to 23. It wasn't even close. Well, I thought it was going to be close. Was. So the question now is where do they end up in the BCS poll? Mm-hmm. Remember, they got they got skunked last week, and so hopefully they'll get at least get in the poll. And maybe they'll get, get their skunked. name right, not yeah. U.S. Man, at least, <laughs> US at least they get US. their name right. <laughs> <laughs> so they, oh, they play boy. tennis at UTSA, yeah. but they also play a little football. And this is Horns. Speaking of football, Iverson, yeah, yeah wow. here we go. Do they play football Next. in Austin? <laughs> yeah. Four straight losses here <laughs> for Texas. I think wow. it was the first yeah. time in years. Yeah, but this, this one wasn't even really close after the second half. Yeah. At least the other, they were winning one point. They switched quarterbacks. That didn't work either. And so some Mark has got some, uh, some well, problems up there. Yeah. Wow. Well, and he's going to the SEC in a couple mm. of years. Aggies. Let's talk oh, about Aggies. <laughs> there you go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, Justin. Take way. it away. Look take it out, Justin. Look at those moves. <laughs> Close this out. Wow. Yeah. Best running back duo in the SEC. Yeah. Way to go, Justin. Just, well, Isaiah okay. Spiller, Anaya what? Smith, yeah. We what? didn't score an offensive touchdown, so there's that. There, there were no offensive touchdowns scored in this game. But yep. the defense, right there. I was going to say, Auburn didn't even score a touchdown. Yep. What what does this mean for AM? Oh, Where are we now? Break oh, it down. Listen, we got we to gotta win out, and we need Auburn to beat Alabama. We get to go play Georgia in the SEC championship. Ooh. Boom. Done. 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 Here, Done. Here we go. A lot of ifs. We'll see. He's got SEC dreams. So already. you're a big uh, anti whoever Alabama's playing and a big mm-hmm. Auburn fan. Yeah, for now. Year, yep. right? Absolutely. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, and can't say it enough, love that AM defense led by two San Antonio kids as well, DeMarvin Leal on the defensive line, and Jalen yep. Jones closed out that game with an interception late against Auburn. So love the fact that those guys are playing well at that level. And you, you notice during the game, they were, they were scrolling how AM has got these commits from mm-hmm. some of these top. They got the number one recruit. Top players well, in the country, yeah. I see like what how happens they, when a UT has to I like to play how they A&M. recruit while they're playing. <laughs> with, well, that's team. why you pay Jimbo, Sorry. right? Bring in the yeah, best talent. <laughs> what was that about UT? Mm. They're okay. going to have to play. They're going to have to play these guys. <laughs> See, RJ just kind of slipped that in there. I did. RJ, I did. David, Sorry. thank you guys so much. Thank you. So, Justin, you feeling good? Yeah. yeah. I, what, Cautious it, optimism? Yes. We, we need a little more offense, but we'll get there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.
You guys, uh, at least they're winning. <laughs> yes, at That's least they're great. winning. We got the W. Yeah. Uh, winning, also, this picture. Uh, hashtag winning, I'd say. <laughs> Is that uh, what the kids say? Yes. Uh, look at that picture. The sun coming up. The low clouds moving out just in time. That's beautiful. Beautiful colors this morning. We appreciate the pictures, as always, on our KSAT Connect. There's the scene outside right now. Blue skies. Clouds have moved out. 60 degrees at the airport. 62 Kelly's. 59 still at Randolph. But we're seeing those temperatures turn a corner, and we're on our way up. 58 in New Braunfels. The fog has cleared. We can see that now. So uh, clear skies here. That dense fog advisory will go away. Fog no longer an issue. 60 in Honda, 63 Bernie staged. Still some clouds out west. Those are trying to thin out a little bit too. So we'll see some sun area wide today. I mentioned the visibility getting better. No problems there. Dense fog advisory is now gone. No surprise. Dew points in the 50s and 60s. So the moisture starting to surge back in here. And that's due to some southeast Julie winds. We'll see these numbers start to come up a little bit. It's not going to get overly humid, so that's the good news there. But we have high pressure anchored at the surface half to our east. That is starting to usher in that moisture across the state of Texas. It'll get pushed back again with a frontal boundary. Looks like uh, Wednesday night into Thursday. Satellite picture shows we do have some of those clouds that have developed with that moisture moving back in, but no rain. And I'll point out that we're starting to see some high clouds out west. Those will be drifting in tomorrow, so it'll be a little more cloudy on your Tuesday. Dew point tracker shows those dew points drift up to about 60, so that's not too, too bad. And then they get pushed back down with that frontal boundary early Thursday, and then we get another surge of drier, cooler air for the weekend. Timing's great. Uh, as we look at current temperatures across the state, 50s and 60s for the most part, some 70s down to the south. We'll zoom out some. The cold stuff's up across the northwest. It's 32 in Cut Bank, although for November, that's not really that cold. 37 Casper, 34 Boise, and then some more moderate temperatures as you go out east, so with 50s and 60s, but nothing that's uh, bitterly cold at this point. Future cast shows those high clouds moving in tomorrow. That's 7 a.m. And then uh, we'll get uh, clouds through the day tomorrow. Some more clouds Wednesday morning. And then maybe a break Wednesday afternoon before our front comes through. This front, unfortunately, is not going to bring us much rain. It looks like a thin line of showers and really probably off to our north and east uh, will be where the best chance uh, will reside. Nothing much here in San Antonio. I don't think we're going to not going to get much rain out of this front. Bottom line. And then Thursday it does clear some behind the front. So our forecast for today 77 this afternoon. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 10. And it will drift down into the 60s tonight. Uh, tomorrow, 77, mostly cloudy, 79 Wednesday, a little breezy, it's a very small chance of a shower Wednesday night, early Thursday morning, 75 Thursday, 71 Friday, and another surge of some cooler air, as I mentioned, by the weekend. We'll be, oh, let's uh, go to traffic. Yeah, we see what's going on on the roadways. Yeah, thank you. Oh. Ooh, yes. Okay, so our producers are telling us that this just happened there at I-37 at Jones Avenue. Looks like that car, uh, looks like an interesting crash there. Yeah, it's perpendicular and, to the roadway. Yeah, only one, well, it looks like a couple of lanes are still going, mm -hmm. but uh, obviously it's going to hold things up here. We'll keep you updated. All right, we'll be right back. Hi, it's 9.56, and let's take another look there at the accident happening on I-37 at Jones Avenue. And, of course, you see the traffic starting to build up a lot in that area. Try to avoid the area, and have a good day.